as well. Go on, John. <laughs> good evening. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the show. Um, welcome to the show. We've got an awesome young guest on um, t tonight. And um, I, I have seen her in action against the lefties in Manchester just the other week. Scurry lefties, mm. those that would hit you if the police weren't there. Well, I think they did it, people. And yeah, um, that's what we're, we're up against. But um, I'll introduce you. Um, Sydney, um, introduce yourself, please. Yeah, I'm Sydney. I run a channel over a few different um, social media called The Grey Area. Though that's, I, at some point, I'm going to just change it to Sydney Giants, make it more personalised. Um, I started covering the freedom demonstrations in May of 2021, and that was because I was actually getting bullied throughout COVID because my parents were attending the protests and my peers were calling me a super spreader because my parents would put on Facebook and they found out they'd put stickers in my lunchbox so all my friends would know about it. Um, so yeah, I started streaming and then I got homeschooled because school really wasn't for me at all. And yeah, freedom demos basically constantly. Fast forward to August of 2022 and there was a Drag Queen Story Hour demonstration um, for and counter protest. Um, in Norwich and I covered that that was the first time I was ever called a Nazi and a fascist by the far left Antifa um funny enough by someone who think who dresses as a baby um so that's all fun um so throughout the past well 2024 now so two years I've been covering different sort of demonstrations so I've covered anti-immigration rallies um in Norwich London basically anywhere I attended the protest for free speech in Manchester the other week or the other month um, and more drag queen story hours in Lewisham in London. Um, thank you for that. You know, um, uh, you know, I know what it's like myself getting around and I know Paul likes the citizen journalists, um, you know, we definitely need them. And, uh, the, you know, the demonstrations can be scary and stuff like that at times. They, they certainly can. But, um, you know, we want um, fair, um, unbiased representation in the medium. We just don't get that. And that's why we have to go to citizen journalists like yourself and other people who um, are, are, are cute around the, the, the media type thing so so we need that in the chat let me just go to the chat welcome everyone welcome to this week's show uh just a bit of tips up we've got next week we're, we're going to be talking about the leaders of our countries leo vadaka uh yusuf in scotland sadi khan um the welsh um the new welsh pm we're going to be talking about him and we're going to be talking about them in next week's show so so it will be a good one Good evening, Serena. Yes, Red Scout. Craig, hope you're right. God bless you, Craig. God bless you. Been talking about you today, man. God bless you. Aunt Sally. Good evening, Aunt Sally. Um, so, yeah, um, I've attended a couple of the um, student free speech demos in Manchester. A bit rowdy. The first time the police allowed the counter protest to like, rush on to them, there was some health and safety issues with that demo and i tried to tell the police but they weren't listening to me um but you know I, I, i'm going to push these kind of things that we, we shouldn't be have to put up with that kind of people at demonstrations that it's wrong you know what i mean so um and doing demonstrations in manchester can be difficult at the best of times um and especially from the counter protests off the lefties We've had uh, outside of London, Manchester, I think, has been one of the biggest areas um, for protesting other than uh, central London. Uh, Liverpool's quite big. Manchester and Liverpool are always quite big, them places, because they're uh, big on the lefties, United Union and all that in, in, in the thing. So, um, so um, do, do you work or, or do you just work on media, Sydney? Is that what you're doing? Is that how you earn your money? Well, I do often part-time work at like a CAF, um, just basically whenever they need me, they call me, give me a week's notice, they call me in. Um, at the moment, I've actually kind of started a business out of, because I do wildlife photography in my spare time, and 
I've managed in since December, I've got 80,000 followers. So I'm making a bit of money off that. Um, obviously not enough, like in the long run, sustainably. I hope to get a career both out of photography and out of journalism, but I'm just going to see where life takes me at this point because, you know, I've had a couple job interviews and I've been declined through all of them, um, which I kind of worry is because of the Antifa presence in Norwich because, you know, I, I mean, I was shared on an anti-fascist page quite a lot and it was shared quite a lot. So I don't, I don't know how many people have seen that, how many people know my name in Norwich in the centre. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get another job just to, like, a secure job to get me on uh, sort of secure. But at the moment, it's just part-time, a little bit out of journalism, but not much, and sometimes in photography. Yeah, it's pretty bad to, to go after you. Paul? Yeah, it's interesting to listen to Sydney. I mean, just new to the movement. I started getting involved in 1976, which is almost 50 years ago. <laughs> now, and then I, I veered from the, the from this, this was the days of the, um, the Ugandan Asians being brought into Britain. Uh, the days of the National Front, Margaret Thatcher. And um, we were aware then that the people who were running our country, especially Ted Heath and then Harold Wilson, were not really interested in the people of this country. They were serving different agendas. They were serving, even then, international agendas. And uh, we, we, we were looking at immigration rates then of maybe 50,000 a year, which is 1,000 a week. And we, we, we were sounding the alarm then. We were saying this is going to lead to the transformation of Britain. Because it was very, it was only, looking back, it was only like 30 years after the Second World War. So it was a very traditional Britain that I, you know, grew up in as a, as a young man. And um, we, we, were, we, we were proud to be British, very proud. And we loved our country. We loved our inheritance. And there was a guy called Enoch Powell who was making his speeches. And he was talking about the dangers that we faced. Of course, at the, in those days, the IRA were not at their big campaigns. It was absolute mayhem in Northern Ireland. But um, we, we were taking a stand. And we, even Enoch Powell was looking 50 years into the future. And he, I think he said in 1970, if we haven't settled the immigration problem by 2020, 50 years on, or the EU, the EEC, as it was then known, will be finished as a nation. So he gave us a 50-year window to save Britannia. And this, this, of course, applied to the whole of Western Europe, really. So it saved the nation of Western Europe. Um, so I got involved then. And, but I veered to the left once Mrs. Thatcher got elected. I was living in Liverpool. And the militant tendency... Trotskyite movements, they had a lot of energy. I was a young man, I started reading Marx, and I got involved with the left until about 1984, when I was totally disillusioned with the left, and started to understand what the Margaret Thatcher agenda was all about, of, of modernising Britain and, and free enterprise. And Mar Margaret Thatcher is also a patriot, of course. But um, I, I really re-engaged with the movement in 2002, joined the BNP, and I knew that Blair had a radical programme to destroy Britain, you know. and uh, But th even in those days, there was a lot of freedom. We had demonstrations, we had meetings. All that came to an end, really, in around 2010, when the police just started to close our meetings down, confiscate newspapers. The left, this is the thing, the right are always were always portrayed as the, the bullies, the, 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 you know, the, the, the boot boys and all that, but we, we'd all just, most of us were middle-aged men, and we were being attacked by the left. The, the violence of the far left is always swept under the carpet and, and ignored, but of course they always initiate the chaos. They don't want the right to uh, get its uh, message out there, to articulate its message in the public square. So you, it was everything was always dramatic. The, the left would always make sure you had an enemy, but we overcame and we persevered. And um, you talked about the the COVID situation, the vac situation. I think after 2016, uh, when we voted for Brexit and then Trump got elected, everything again changed in this country. Got even worse then. I mean, I, I remember LBC. I was always on always on LBC and talk radio, national radio stations newspapers and, and you could get a message out there you could get 
debate going and, and, and it was a certain respect for freedom of speech. But I think after 2016, the globalists decided they didn't want the people to have a voice anymore because it was too dangerous. I mean, somebody once said that mm, I don't bother voting because if, it, if voting actually changed anything, they'd abolish it. And effect, effect, effectively, because we'd managed to get Brexit, we we'll vote for Brexit, we hadn't really achieved it administratively, but and, and, and elect Trump and the march of populism, the globalist left, the globalist elite decided to shut down the public square and to, to really make voting irrelevant. This, this, is, this is one of the dangers of the moment, is that the major parties, as George Galloway always says, are two cheeks of the same backside. I say it a bit differently. I say the Conservatives are one cheek, the Lib Dem to the other, and Labour are that hole in the middle where the CAC comes out of, because that's all they do, produce CAC, you know. So um, we're in this situation where we're shut out of the mainstream media now. You know, it's heavily censored. but effectively shut out of Parliament. I mean, Lee Anderson has moved over to reform. There's Andrew Bridging, and that's about it, in the House of Lords and the House of Commons. They're all yes-men. They're all ripped into line, and there's not much debate going on. And then there's the media, the mainstream media, television, newspapers, radio. They shut down debate. There's no real debate on. we got this GB News, but it's, that's a little bit different. It offers more opportunities. But I was struck today that Donald Trump, he floated his uh, media empire yesterday, Truth Social, and it was sold, I think it's something like $4.6 million. And it's gone up today, $9,000 million. So Trump <laughs> has created this platform, which I've, I've never been on and never accessed so far, because I go on an X. But Trump has created this platform, which has <laughs> enriched him to the tune of $9 billion. Trump has just become not only fabulously wealthy, but one of the most wealthiest men on earth. It just shows you the power of social media. Now, you're talking about getting an income, Sydney. I used to have a YouTube channel, and we used to post videos, and some of them started to go viral. One of them got over 100,000. Another one got 140,000. So we developed a big following, 12, 15,000 subscribers. We put a PayPal link to that, and the money just started rolling in. I'd switch on my phone, and it's like donations from all over the globe. South Africa, United States, Canada, Australia. Literally, in a couple of months, we got £4,000 from that. And um, then I interviewed somebody who I think was from a prescribed organization I wasn't aware at the time. And I, I, I got my uh, PayPal link closed down. They shut it down. They sent it. And they started to shadow ban the channel and stuff. And it winded down. It was sad, really, because we were still getting 10,000 uh, viewers just before COVID, you know. But COVID was a shock to everything. It stopped the momentum of our movement. It allowed the elite to take total control of the media, of the political system, of debate. And, and you began to see that the mainstream media in this country is not the tribune of the people as it once viewed itself. The, the media used to view itself as like raising, you know, speaking truth to power, raising the big issues with the powerful. The media saw itself as the friend of the people. Suddenly, it was just there as the plaything of the elite. It was there to manipulate us, to shut down debate. I mean, the anti-vaxxers, as you just said yourself there before, Sydney, we were treated like uh, like the plague, and yet we were speaking the simple truth. They were pushing a vaccine that hadn't been tested and had no validity and had dangers attached to it. My own mother took the vaccine, you know, clots in her legs, was given um, uh, methadone, uh, was given uh, morphine, and then midazolam, and died. I mean, the vax, the vax killed my mother. She was a strong woman. She was seventy-eight, but she was a strong woman. And I believe all these deaths that we're seeing now. Well, we can't speak about this again. It was still under censorship here, so we've got to be very careful. But uh, this, this is the tragedy of this whole pandemic situation that should be free speech, and we're only now really starting to reassert ourselves. But I'm really confident that trump is rocking the boat in america that the maggot army is shaking up america and what happens in america is crucial and of course 
In the East, we've got the Ukraine war. We're fighting supposedly in defense of democracy. Uh, Zelensky has abolished elections. He's abolished opposition parties. He's uh, sending out press gangs to grab men off the streets to fight his army. The money that he's receiving from America is going missing into the bank accounts of the people who are ruling the country. It's just one corrupt mafia, and we're supposed to go and fight and die for this. They don't represent the Ukrainian people. They have no validity now, the Zelensky regime. But we're not allowed to, again, this, there's no debate within the British media. Britain has become a very strange place. But there is a hunger and appetite for independent voices. There's an appetite, an endless appetite for truth. People want truth speakers. They don't want to listen to propaganda. Propaganda guarantees that you lose your legitimacy and you lose your credibility. We're truth speakers on this station. We say it as it is, even within the boundaries that they put on YouTube. We speak truth. And if you're going to be a truth speaker, Sydney, you're going to get an audience. You're going to get followers. But you're not doing it all the time. We're not doing it for ourselves and to promote ourselves. We're doing this because we believe in justice. We believe in right, not wrong. We believe in holding uh, power to account. And ultimately, we believe in a democracy that we, the people, should decide who controls this country, what, what policies are followed in this country, and who ultimately should live in this country. We're being manipulated by international elites, globalist elites, who want to have power for themselves to exclude us. As Bob Dylan said, just pawns in their game. But we're not pawns. We've got a tradition. We've got a heritage in this country. We've got a heritage of freedom. It goes right back, not just to the Civil War, Cromwell, where it was said, sovereignty abides in the people under God. No, it goes back a little even further than that, to the Magna Carta. The people, we have liberty in this country. We have freedom. And we should, this is, this is like a civil rights issue. We should, I mean, I've been taken to court three times on free speech issues and won three times, but I've been threatened, I've been locked up, I've had to pay, you know, legal fees, I've had all sorts of issues with the police, harassed by the police, but I've won through and we can't, you've got to persevere in the face of opposition, persevere. It says in the Bible, the righteous are as bold as lions. And that's what you've got to be, Sydney. If you, if you want to make an impact, you've got to be as bold as, as lions. John Lawrence, he's a lion and a half. It's over to you, Joe. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Wise words, uh, wise words. I mean, let me see what's going on in America with Trump and, and, and stuff like that, how far and how they're smearing him and stuff like that. And he said ages ago, Trump, that he's, he's going to take down the media. That's what he said. Calls them out all the time. And so we should be able to. But, you know, like, I've seen the media myself from both ends. I've been a spotlight. I were on Northwest tonight. But I also seen the two-facedness in the, the media. And at the moment, we've got a lot about the Batley school teacher um, in the news. But um, around the same time, there was a young lad killed from Batley called Bradley Gledill. And I know the Bradley Gledill. I met his mum. I met his sister. And I followed the, the, the case to the courts and stuff like that. And on the 4th of June, May 21, I did a video reading through the reports on on the news and um, in the media and there was victim blaming him they were trying to put blame on bradley when there was no blame to put on him and what it was was that they said that bradley was looking for trouble and he had a weapon i think there might have been a, a knuckle duster found but it wasn't in the context that they said it was and um even throughout all the court case, people on social media were attacking his family with this narrative, with this narrative. On crime court day, there was no mention of it because nothing like that was involved in the crime. And even the, even the newspapers were, were siding with like general public against the family. And his mum did a big statement saying, you abused me for all these weeks. My son's dead and he didn't do nothing wrong. You tried to victim blame him. So, you know, is that the end of it? Well, no, because um, the family took the case to the Royal Courts of Justice to get extra time on the guys, yeah? And 
to my horror, my disbelief, my anger, they were still trying to victim blame Bradley in the Royal Courts of Justice on, on the, the, the uh, appeal hearing to get more time on the cases. And, you know, even though that would have solicitors, the, the media were, were guilty at the beginning. I called them out on that video. May the 4th, 2021, Big John called them out. Nobody else did. I did. And uh, like I said, I followed the case all the way to the Royal Courts of Justice. So no one can say, I don't know what I'm talking about. I took um, an A4 pad that like nearly filled it up in three hours of taking notes. And, you know, and I've seen it myself first hand. And I've seen it myself first hand how they, they, they always try to shift the narrative. You know, someone dies and then they, they always blame the far right. Um, as I can say, as I can tell you about Oldham and Rochdale, is that the lessons the, the, the lessons learned there was it was because of the councils and the people running them towns that attracted people to the towns who, who they didn't want to the towns. And still to this day, all they say is far right, far right, but it's not anyone's far right's fault. It's the council's fault for not dealing with these issues between communities. This is a big thing I go on about all the time, but you won't see it in the media. The media certainly are um, corrupt and they need calling out. You know, um, what's the best way... What's Sydney's perspective on the media? What's your perspective, Sydney, on the media, the national media? I think it's a load of bullshit. We haven't seen yeah. much truth. I mean, obviously, I've only been in the movement since, well, been in the movement since 2020, started actually getting involved in 2021. I haven't, I've maybe seen a couple true articles, and that's it. Either everything has a spin, or they just don't report on it at all. Um, they're very, um, well, woke, for lack of a better word that I can think of at the moment. As long as you're black, as long as you are LGBT, as long box as you're ticking, a woman. Box ticking, you can just put it back to box ticking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, as long as you fit those, you're going to get reported on if something bad's happened to you or if you've done something good. If you've done something bad to a white straight male, it's not going to come back. It's not going to be reported at all because no one cares about that. No one cares that what the majority of England... Um, has got hurt in some way or has been killed, everyone cares about the um, minorities of it. Well, who do you think controls the media and why do you think they push this agenda? I think, well, whoever you'd put in a box of elites, so governments, um, people like billionaires, um, I think they do it to break the country apart rather than, you know, cause this is a battle with, you know, immigration and all of them being put up in these fancy hotels that no one else can afford i think we need to fight that battle together as a country but if you are you know as um a black woman if you're terrified because the white man once persecuted you um and once discriminated and now suddenly for some reason you have to fear it again you're not going to stand with them even if you agree i mean we see it with antifa and the left all the time even if you agree on something, you can't stand together because they don't like the fact they have a different opinion on another thing. So I think it's a way of, you know, for example, if you're against trans ideology, somehow you're put in the box of also being against immigration. You're also against vaccines. Like you fit all of these boxes when you haven't even spoken about them yet. So I think it's, putting a label on the fascist Nazi and decreasing the words as a whole and making sure that people can't stand together if one day we all want to go against the government. However, we can't unite because we all hate each other because we can't ag agree to disagree. It's interesting that because you've got intersectionality in the left, haven't you? But they all yeah. link together different movements. And, uh, you know, obviously the Jews were part of this intersection. They claim themselves to be a persecuted minority. You just give an narrative there about a black person being persecuted in the past. You see, this this is for me. It's a false narrative. This is the, what what the left always de uh, trade on is guilt. 
They'll try and hook you on guilt. I mean, they push abortion, right? Once a woman has an abortion, she feels guilty for life because she'll live her own child. Uh, they want to push the race guilt. That somehow white people are always guilty because of slavery. Forgetting the fact that Africa, slavery was indigenous to it, not only indigenous to Africa, the Africans took slaves themselves. And of course, the Islamic slave trade goes back to the 7th century and is still going on today and was on an even bigger scale in the Atlantic uh, slavery. And that the only people who ever stopped the slave trade, they brought it to an end, were the British. Once we won the Battle of Trafalgar, Britannia controlled the waves and we decided that's it, we have the power now to stop slavery international slavery and thousands of british soldiers and sailors and marines gave their lives in the 19th century to stop arab slave traders or the slave traders in brazil and the far east so it's a it's it's a glorious history of actually turning around and fighting on behalf of people oppressed peoples but we're always presented as the oppressors and they, they'll always will put that narrative that somehow we've, we've got a guilt complex over something. This is what the left do. But the, the issue is really, why is there no uh, plurality in the media? Why aren't there really alternative opinions? There is to a degree, I mean, some newspapers back to conservatives. I mean, the left always attack the Daily Mail, don't think the Daily Mail, they call it, and whatever, and say it's all right-wing bigots. But if you read the Daily Mail, it strikes me as quite a liberal newspaper, People who really want to defend this country, who really want to put an end to mass immigration, who really want to make democracy work again, their voice is excluded. It's not there. And the question is, it's about ownership. You talked about the government there, the government censoring the media, and that's an issue. But even the politicians, who owns the politicians? Who pays their, you know, who make? you see, the political parties are controlled. They, they need money. They're bought, they, they depend on donors. Every individual MP who's a professional politician is looking for a secure future, is looking for money, is, is looking for, for financial support. I mean, the Labour Party is bought and paid for by the trade unions. So, but there are huge donors, and you see with Keir Starmer's Labour Party that the Jewish donors who left during the Chetami Corbyn era because they didn't like his position on Israel are now back with a vengeance to have taken control of the Labour Party again and there's organi an organisation called the Labour Friends of Israel and the Conservative Friends of Israel and this is a source of money I, mean, I think it's about 50 Labour MPs that are in Labour Friends of Israel and they get, they get a lot of money from that and the Tories there's even more so you began to realize it's global money that controls the media. It's global money that controls the politicians. And it all comes back to New York City and the big finance center and the little hats. They are the people who are dishing out the goodies. And so when you challenge their narrative, and they've been pushing open borders, they've been pushing the attack on the nation state, the attack on the indigenous peoples of Europe. They've been pushing this from before the First World War. This is a long-term project that they're engaged in. It hasn't just happened overnight. This has been going on for decades, and it's reaching an end game now. And, and this, 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 this is the problem. Simply speaking about it, it's, it's all... You see, we, we, I've been taken to court three times, supposedly for hate speech, but each time I've managed to be vindicated because it wasn't hate speech. It was They hate the truth being spoken. So you've got the legal system against you. You've got the politicians against you, the mainstream parties. But fringe parties, look at reform. Look at, I mean, we, we, we've got 40,000 followers on Twitter, John, uh, NHP UK. I mean... You can get a voice out there. You can make things happen. Are you connected to any organisation, Sydney, or, or any networks? Well, I mean, I'm connected with, you know, media organisations. So Oracle Films, I've, we're quite um, close. Iconic, so David Ife, what more Gareth Ike and Jamie Ike. Um, but I've been to Iconic once. I'm planning to do it again because possible job opportunity, but we'll see. Um, who else am I connected to? 
I'm, okay, I'm connected to a few groups. I just can't name them off the top of my head at the moment. But we're all mutual followings. We know of each other. Well, we're all in the process of educating ourselves. How do you go through the process of educating yourself, Sydney? Typically, I'll look through articles or do some, you know, statistical research if I can, if I can find time for it. But mostly it's looking at news articles, then trying to find an article that will contradict it and going through it, seeing how many articles I can find that contradicts it and seeing what rational opinions they have to why they are against or why they have a different opinion to the first article. Yeah, um, this is the, yeah, go on, John. Um, so, uh, <laughs> I forgot what I was going to say then. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I mean, the media not in, in, infallible. The media can held to be, can put it mildly. Account. Hillsborough did the old, the Sun newspaper to account. Yeah. Uh, the newspaper scandal where they were hacking people's phones and, you know, the, the, there was a little bit held to account. So they're not infallible, but, you know, any, and I think any media is good media. I, I've had some bad media, but it's good media and any kind of good media. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm somebody that they're scared of anyway, because I don't speak, the, I don't speak their narrative. And, um, and, and I, you know, I, I've educated myself. No one can say that I don't know anything about rape gang statistics and stuff like this and court cases I've, I've you know i'm wise and all that so i don't really get much interaction i don't think the media will come out of the way to come and find me but you know it, it's up to us to get out there now um sydney mentioned like the freedom movement and what's interesting is um when the freedom movement started people like sydney and that wanted to say something and they wanted to be a voice to speak out and so many people um sort of like walk up and i, I mean I'm, I, I'm only saying this because i've uh, interviewed jonathan tilt freedom alliance leader when he re ran in the mp uh seat in batley i've got a lot of friends who was like more on that kind of movement and it was a good movement to get people up and running and i know a lot of the people to do with Freedom Alliance, the vaccines, and all, they all work together now with um, students against tyranny and stuff like that. Um, you know, so it's good. And I thought it was a really good sign that of people standing up across the country to the tyranny that were, were suffering. Now, it's opened people's eyes. And now more people want to know about our schools and universities. For the first time, my leaflet's going to have on critical race theory. I haven't mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it on my leaflet this year. Um, further education on our kids, what they're doing to them. Besides uh, the, the preschools and the junior schools, what they're doing to them in the universities, where the, the, the kind of mental indoctrination is at its worst in them universities. So it, it's worrying. And it should be worrying to any national party, any anybody of, of a standing of like our national housing parties. It's, it's worry. It's a worry for us. So um, what do you think about that, um, Sydney? All the like stuff, all the walk stuff in universities and that. And tell us a bit. So I think that if we are going to combat anything against the government or anything like that, we need to target the students. And I don't mean target in obviously a, a bad way. I, I mean that we need to give them al alternative information. Of course, we have schools now teaching children as young as, what, five about um, trans ideology, uh, transgender. Um, <clears throat> I think there was an article about how nine-year-olds uh, nine were being taught about anal and oral sex. Um so having all of this pushed into young minds, and obviously, you know, they're very influential at that time, um, and they don't have another al alternative for that. They don't have a voice to say, well, this isn't right. This is why you shouldn't be told that. This is why you still need to keep young as it is, rather than joining pol uh, political conversations, because it is political now, um, as much as it shouldn't be. LGBT has turned into a political conversation. It shouldn't be shoved down the throats of a five-year-old. That's more, I mean, 
when I have kids, I probably wouldn't tell them about that until they're 16 because they shouldn't even be getting into relationships by that point, I don't think. Um, so yeah, if we're going, if we're going to target anyone with the alternative knowledge that we have gained throughout however many years, it needs to be the kids. The yeah. kids are going to be what changes because it's their future, well, it's our future. Because I'm still a kid, it's our future that needs to change for the better, not for the worse. As of right now, we're going down a, a quite a dark path where freedom of speech and debate are going to be completely suppressed, where I fear that paedophilia is going to be totally normal and accepted. I mean, we see a lot of people now who have got on like child porn uh, charges. Instead of getting, what, 14 years that they're supposed to, they get 30 hours community service, 30 hours unpaid work, and that's it, rather than, you know, what we're supposed to have as punishment we just get a slap on the wrist, go do what you want. Um, so, yeah, I think that we, we we need to give the kids the extra information, and that's how we're going to make a change. The yeah. thing is, we can't rely on the institutions of the state to have yeah. any common sense. We, we don't seem to – this is the problem now. Because we have this demographic deficit, the people's voice doesn't count anymore. We're excluded by the political party system. That's why we created the National Housing Party, because we need alternative vehicles to express ourselves, to organize around. We need to grow as a party. There are a lot of small parties. Obviously, the reform has grown, but we need the smaller parties who are prepared to challenge the mainstream narratives and state power. They need to grow. We need people power. I mean, obviously, we've had the MAGA movement in America. You know, we've seen people power in Europe. There's a lot of alternative political parties in Europe. This is a political struggle. But we need an alternative narrative. You talked there about paedophilia. You talked about like uh, pushing transgenderism on children. This is all an attack on our Christian inheritance, what we viewed as the as human beings, the, you know, and what was right and what was wrong what was um, good and what was bad, what was wholesome and what was perverse. That whole, which which is rooted in eternity, it's, it's you know, they, they, they're being modern, but these things, nothing ever changes, nothing new under the sun. This battle over right and wrong has been fought since the beginning of mankind, you know, and it's on the same lines. And we have to win this battle afresh every generation. So you've got to have a strong ideology a strong belief system to counteract the ideologies that they're pushing. But th th these ideologies haven't just emerged from nowhere. These are agendas that have been thought up and are being pushed through the education system, through the media, and through politics. It's a systematic pushing of these agendas. And we can, we can have, like, minor victories where we push back, reclaim ground, but these agendas are well-financed, and they're pushed by institutions, not just national institutions, but global institutions like the United Nations. NGOs is another instrument they use. Of course, there's people like Soros and even Zuckerberg who are financing these people. You're up against a monster, really. Now, you've got to slay the dragon. It was St. George who slayed the dragon, and that's appropriate, isn't it? Because this week we've seen what's happened with the England shirt. That is, again, part of the trans agenda. And it's, it's all about making our people sterile. This is all links in together with the Great Replacement. They want to make us sterile so we don't have children, we don't develop families, and then they can bring in the immigrants to replace us from the third world. You, you destroy the nation. You destroy the traditions and the, the sense of belonging that people have. You, de you destroy our identity. And you can impose whatever agenda you want then upon us. That's what the elite want to do. They want to break us so that we no longer feel part of a national tradition and a national heritage. All these things link together. Now, we will not give that up. And there's people across Europe. There's a, there's a political party in Portugal called, what's it called, John? Chuga, is it? Or Chenga or something? Chega. Chega. The political party in Portugal has just won 20% in the, in the election. That word means enough. What's gone on? You see, you think, Sydney, this is new. 
This has been going on for a long time. It's getting worse and worse. One of the reasons why we're at war with Russia and we're, we're pushing, we're trying to destroy Putin because he does not submit to this woke agenda. We can call it woke. A lot of people, you see, a lot of people don't really have a clue about what's happening. Our role in the social media world, and we have this social media is to educate people. The legacy media is dying. It's lost credibility. It lost credibility during the pandemic. It's lost credibility over all the big issues. And uh, but once it loses credibility, it loses its legit legitimacy. People stop listening to it and stop looking for it. People are looking for alternative views. But we've got to have a strong narrative about what's happening. You see, when I talk to people about the Great Replacement, they're confused. They're not sure what that's all about. Cultural Marxism, that's the, that's the real new religion that we're up against. They don't know what that is. The Great Sterilization, the organizations that are finan financing it, the Zionist control of our major political parties. People don't know anything about this. The globalist takeover of our institutions, the destruction of the nation state. These are all, this is all happening and it needs to be exposed. We need to educate people and say to, say to people this, look, what is happening is going to affect you. And you said, just said there, Sydney, it's going to affect your children, their education, their future. They're not happy with just like replacing us. They want to destroy us. And so this is a moral battle as well. It's, a, it's an existential battle. We're not a battle now for the survival of our nations. And people are joining this battle. This is the point. We're not alone. We're, we've got to see ourselves as part of a huge movement across the world to bring back traditional values and traditional ways of life and, and, and bring back values, true values. And this is, But because we've got the social media, because we've got X, Truth Social, as I said before, we've got all these vehicles now, and this, we're on there. What are we on here tonight? YouTube and Rumble and so on. Yeah, yeah, we can get a message across, but it's got to be a message. It's got to have a narrative which is deeper than the mainstream narrative, is more profound, is more truthful, is more penetrating. So we have a duty to educate ourselves and to educate each other and then to educate the people of this country against what is being imposed upon them and because we live in a democracy i believe we can still fight back and win this battle john oh paul um we had james harvey in earlier on and he, he, he was commenting how acute you was when you was talking about the marxism i just thought i'd mm. mention that so he, he, he commented um you know uh, like, like sydney said i i definitely but um, I'm, I'm on board with we've got to like uh, look at education our children and stuff like that i pointed out that they get a disastrous start to a school life in oldham a lot of the kids here we don't have a good record with our schools uh there's things going on in schools now that are just shocking stabbings bullying and stuff like that then we've got obviously the universities uh, area. But anyway, um, I'm just going to skip past that. So um, I see that you went to um, a standing for women march. Yeah, come let on. women speak. Let women speak. So come yeah. on. So I, I know, I know Kelly. I met Kelly several times. But come on, tell me what do you think of um, what of um, let women speak organisation as a whole? Yeah. I think that it's a very good organisation combating um, trans ideology, men trying to use female spaces. I don't think that that's agreed. I think, you know, if they want, if they don't want to use their actual biological sex as changing rooms, they'd rather use the other ones. Maybe we could create um, spaces that are just for trans, um, meaning a trans male, trans female changing areas, or more simply use disabled areas because I know now and I know a lot of other women and actually men are the same is that when we need to go to the toilet we now just use the disabled because we don't want to go well I don't want to go in there and see a grown man um who's obviously physically stronger than me as a 18 year old 116 pound girl that would clearly overpower me it makes me feel uncomfortable and I shouldn't feel like that in our own space you know how there's you know if there's a smoker in a non-smokers area you don't want to be inhaling it. And that's why we have these areas is so people don't get the health effects 
of um, or health side effects of smoking. Um, so I com I completely agree with their message. Um, actually, uh, so in the UEA Sports Park, the University of East Anglia, which is one of the best universities in Norwich, more, most woke, that's where all of Antifa come from, um, there was an incident, I believe, there was a sexual assault in a female-only area. The UEA didn't want to approach it in fear of um, discrimination um, in case they were trans or are part of LGBT. Now, James did actually organise a protest um, against that on the 4th of May at 1 o'clock, so a little bit of a promotion there. And I'm giving a speech there. It's my first speech that I'll ever do. Well, I've done so far um, with more to come, probably. So, yeah, and I think a lot of the women speak, uh, let women speak people are actually coming to that to support it, even though, you know, some of them are actually left wing, but not the f extreme left wing that we all experience. It's the left wing that you can actually have a discussion with. You can actually have a debate with the pleasant, older left wing, because obviously the ones that you can't have a conversation with they're quite young they're like 25 and under so well I'll be are you only 18 old. sydney are yeah. you only 18. Oh, yeah. i thought you were older than i thought you'd been to university <laughs> no. you know the thing about so you haven't been to university yet no i don't i don't plan to i don't want to be in that much debt <laughs> yeah yeah because you go to university that's where you'll be absorbed into the to that culture of cultural marxism you see yeah uh, well people could, you know, the, People cool. already assume that I have been because I've got split dyed hair. I constantly dye my hair. I've got piercings. Um, I wear the sort of style and makeup that they all wear. So often when I'm at a protest, everyone asks whether I'm on their side or not. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's something that's happened since I started streaming. The, 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 so know, where did your the, ideas come from, Sydney? Where, did, where, where Where's your, your parents, yeah? yeah. So you trust I mean, that, yeah, that's... Yeah, it's a interesting. Lot it, cool. A lot of it is also from it just being shoved down my face constantly. I mean, I I grew up a lot faster than everyone else. Whilst everyone else was still playing unicorns, I was just, you know, playing football or I was going out fishing with my dad. I got a phone later than everyone else. I got a phone at 13, I think, 12. Everyone else got one at like seven years old, which I think is completely wrong. Even then I thought it was completely wrong. I've never followed the crowds and I've also, I've always hated people who have followed the trends. So I think constantly everyone going through down the same leftist route kind of diverted me away from it and I wasn't interested in it. And obviously I'm better off for it because, you know, imagine how many mental health issues I'd have if I went to yeah, the left. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All well, I'd it's all about drugs trends. and... But the thing yeah. is, uh, Sydney, um, you can get a long way, a long way, simply with common sense. If you yeah. hold on to your traditional common sense, you're not going to submit to these agendas. But what they do, they make you feel excluded. If you don't buy into their agendas, like uh, you know, smoking pot or uh, sexual promiscuity or sexual perversity of all sorts, or you just just the whole woke agenda. If you don't buy into that, they'll make you feel excluded musically in terms of the, you know, culturally. And, and, and it's difficult for young people because you need to belong. You need to belong to a group. This is why we need an alternative group all the time emerging so that people have a tribe to belong to and where we can all interact and exchange ideas. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's great to hear that we, we have other young people theo comes on doesn't he callum we have a lot of other young people who have not really submitted to this woke agenda john yeah they haven't um i just want to give up um a big um um shout out anyway to uh kelly j keen aka palsy parker um i did an interview with her in 2018 the the month after she did a stunt with the, the billboard and this is before she blew up and became famous i've met her at glasgow and at trowbridge um and um she started a political party up the registered party of women and i know they've got at least one councillor who 
was recorded going into um, a public thing about women and getting thrown out because a woman said she's transphobic and, and she talks, she's, she's in a Labour dominated council and she's talking about how hard it is to go up against a Labour lot. So um, interesting stuff that and that in the two year break that's coming up after this election, I will be doing a little bit. I might try and get down to see Kelly J again, maybe an interview. I'll, I'll get her on the show. I should get her on the show um, and, and, and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, I'm a, I'm, I'm a bit of a fan, and I have been since 2018. And what it is, what it is, now, the, 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 the further the, the LGBT community is breaking apart because the lesbians are being targeted because they won't go in men who say the women you know, and then they said a lesbian, and it's breaking apart. And I can't see this ideology, this walk ideology, going on much longer, except for crumbling down around all the politicians' heads and that, and they'll all look really stupid. And you know what? What how, how I could safely say this? Look what happened in Ireland. Leo Varadkar is out because the was not accepted. And they voted against scrubbing at the, the the reference woman of the, the the history books and that. So it, it's just not happening, guys. There is a resistance. The media, obviously, that they, they love to be woke and show everything like that, but they're not showing the, the full truth. But um, like I said, um, it's good 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 job, Sydney. Get out to demos. I, I would say get to more of the um, standing for women demos. Certainly. Um, they're a good crowd. I've met um, several like people around them who I'm still in contact with now, and and, and stuff like that. Several women, a uh, couple a couple who've running. Uh, I met a conservative councillor in Glasgow who was at a standing for women march. Uh, they've got their own councillors now, so um, and they're running in elections. And anybody who runs in elections is doing the right thing. Is, is absolutely doing the right thing for whatever reason. Um, so um, big up on them. And like I said, get to more of the events, Sydney. There'll be good events at uh, 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 Kelly's events. Can I ask Sydney, um, you're 18, right? So tell us about your generation, where the ideas are coming from. Have they been brainwashed in schools? And what do they think of this whole woke agenda, transgenderism? pushing all sorts of different lifestyles. Is there anything left of traditional Christian Britain in your generation? I think there is a lot left of the traditional Christian Britain, as you say, but a lot of people are afraid to stand up. A lot of people are afraid to have a voice because they don't see a support network for people who are um, absent, not absent minded, what am I thinking of, um, who don't follow the crowd, who don't, believe what they're told instantly who actually do their research on things they i mean with me i was completely shunned out of school and the teachers helped with that they just wanted me out because even though i was bullied and i was a victim because i was the victim i was the problem i mean the people who bullied me they went on to break one of my mates nose um wow yeah why that, did they he, bully you as why did they bully you um <sighs> It was because of a multitude of reasons, but the la the main thing, I think, was because I didn't follow the crowd, because I was a racist Nazi, um, and because my opinions yeah. didn't agree with theirs, and they saw me as a weirdo because of it, which, you know, if I'm one of the very few people in a school who believe that way and I actually speak my mind, I, I, I don't blame them. I mean, um, members of Students Against Tyranny, they've had memes made of them, and they got shunned out of their schools. Um, and that's kind of what happened to me as well. I mean, still happens to me, but of course, I, I'm in the public eye now. I can't really complain. Um, a lot of people are terrified of losing their support network, their quote unquote friends, because I think if someone's your friend, they don't really care about your politics. They care about your opinion. Um, I It is just because of you know the parents having this expectation to what their children should believe what the schools are teaching i mean i went to a pride rally two years ago it must have been two years ago now it's mental 
Um, and there was these Christians preaching on why LGBT is a bad thing. And one of the parents said that the, the, I think it was a seven-year-old son was taking LGBT classes in school. The kid doesn't have a childhood. He's not going to, you know, he has not experienced life. It's just basically he's born, he lives the years that he's not even going to remember because I think a lot of people can't remember much before they were five years old and straight into politics, straight into controversy. And that's then how they're expected to live throughout their entire life or else they're a disappointment to their friends, to their family, to people who might look up to them. Um, I think we need, as like a whole movement, we need to show people that we still have friends. I mean, I don't have any friends really in Norwich um, that I actively go to meet. I mean, the friend that I did uh, meet up with a lot, she's moved to Australia. But so I don't really go out in Norwich a lot. The only time I do is for wildlife photography. But it's still, you know, I still know there's people in Norwich who, if I was up for it, they'd go for a coffee with me and talk politics. We need more people to realize that. We need more people to say, look, I'm from here. If anyone else doesn't want to speak up and feels persecuted because their opinions are just different to everyone else's, then you can speak to me and you can come and meet me for a coffee. You, you don't have to hide away, which is what a lot of kids are doing. You know what? It's really scary what you said because it's a form of child abuse which is going on. It's being Absolutely. imposed by the state through the education system, reinforced by the media. And people, their own sanity, I mean, it's psychotic what they're teaching these kids. Really, they're causing them to become freaks. Now, you know, the fact that you've held on to your sanity, it, that's, that's a sign of hope. You know, if you can hold on, other people can do too. But it sounds to me like we need to abandon the state education system. Just homeschool your kids. I've got a friend there, uh, Jamie, Jamie Lilly, Jamie Lyle, and um, he homeschools his children. And he's, you know, he's politically for political reasons. He doesn't want them to be, you know, brainwashed with this woke agenda. And I know this woke agenda is extremely strong now in all the state institutions. They've basically taken over. For the sake of your kids, it's more or less get them out of these state schools. But as you said there, Sydney, it's really important that we have alternative networks. We don't just come out as individuals and isolated. We've got to network. We've got to meet up with each other. We can use this format, which is social media, but it's you know, when we meet up face-to-face, -face, it's a lot better. Now, the churches used to provide a good network. There are a lot of alternative churches out there, but a lot of churches now have been taken over by the woke agenda. Um you know, I'm a member of various organisations which, which, which are more traditionalist. Um, but um, so, yeah, and ultimately political parties. That's why we found the National Housing Party. We've started out, we had a meeting in Manchester last month. Uh, we, we need to meet up a lot more. We need, we need to form local branches. This is the point. We need to form networks all the time, constantly, so that we can meet up, support each other. Once, once you meet people, like-minded people, and you don't feel isolated, you feel validated, it gives you a lot of strength to overcome. So this is what it's all about. John? John, you're muted. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. I'm just, um, just trying to get some, um, save some Chris for a Chris Butty after. But no, it is important. Um, you know... Uh, uh, I've always felt me throughout my like uh, later adult life that you know education uh, it's got to be looked at, and I always come to this. I, I always give this example, so this is approximate. So, from in, in the year two thousand, 50, 50 children a year went to some kind of clinic to do with a gender, or you know that they were having issues and, and stuff like that. Transgender, yeah, fifty people. Now that figure is in the thousands, guys. It's in mm. the thousands. And in that space of that 20 years, it, it can be nothing but indoctrination in school. It's not mm. something we've developed or learned ourselves. They've come in in the year 2000, the, the, the globalists, they're right, we're doing this work agenda now because we want everyone to be happy and all this lot. And they brought it in, and in 20 years, they've absolutely 
in, in, um, infiltrated the media, our political parties, everything, our, all the stuff we buy, um, everything, all consumer products, and it's coming corporations. In just, yeah, in just twenty years, that is scary, guys. I've got another 20, 30 years of living. What's it going to be like then? Honestly, that is that is scary. Well, the pushback's so, begun, John. We're pushing back. Yeah. And this is pushback right across the West. And when they lose this war in the Ukraine, and when Trump gets back in the White House, the pushback goes to another level. It does. It certainly does go to another level. But, you know, the pushback started. Leo Vadikar found that out, and the Irish Parliament found that out big time. Big time because they had a big sock right up the Raxi because the people are not accepting the war cardiology over there. It's funny that Southern Ireland reminds me of sort of like Oldham and Bradford in the year in 1999. That's what it reminds me because all they do is start, first of all, calling you for our right and saying people have come up and and, and influence people and say that all these names that's what they're saying and it's like that, that happened in oldham and bradford 20 years ago so you know the, the playing the playing a game and the playing the cards out the way the the globalists or whoever's controlling and wants them to and um it, it's pretty nasty but i'm sure Sydney has got a lot more years left yet. A lot more years left. To, there'll be so I'd many years <laughs> battles you'll have to fight, girl, won't they, Paul? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, we have a Bible study tomorrow, Sydney. I don't know if you're interested in Wednesday. Um, we get some young people coming on. Um, but um, get, get in, you know, it's great that you're involved, Sydney, that you're alive. You've got a lot to offer. As John said, you've got, a, you've got many years ahead of you. And uh, it's just good to see that the next generation, there's hope there, you know. You you haven't been totally overwhelmed by this brainwashing. Everything is yeah. a power of suggestion. Come on, Sydney, do you want to have the final word? Well, I was just going to say that um, the younger generation that are awake, we are here. You might not see us and you might not hear us, but there are a lot of us. A lot of us are just scared and a lot of us just need to realise that there is a way forward, even if you're outspoken and even if you don't follow the crowd. Um, and we, as a movement, need to show them that, that is the case because, you know, I've had so many young people randomly support me in protests against the left. Um, I'm now sort of kind of friends with these group of kids of about six kids, all younger than me, all about 13, 14, 15 and they basically try and support me whenever I'm going up against Antifa. Um, so, yeah, the younger how, generation how we, are there. How can we keep in touch with you, Sydney? Um, so my Twitter is journojones05. Telegram, um, Instagram, and YouTube are the grey area. Yeah, and Odyssey. Grey area on YouTube, yeah, excellent. All, I'll, I'll check those things out. Links, all Sydney's links are in the, the video description. And I'll yeah. put the uh, in in the chat now. I'll put a YouTube the grey area area up in YouTube. Yeah, and um, that's gone up. But um, Sydney, thank you very much. It's always good to have younguns on. Um, our youngest Callum even ran in an election and and did did it um, unbelievably successfully well. And, that's um, awesome. And um, you know and it's important that we teach people the right things and we guide them the right way um I, i'm not so biased me um than, than other people are and i will listen to both sides of the story but um keep doing what you're doing i'm sure we'll meet up again and yeah, definitely. Um, all the best to you sydney thank you for having me on no Great. worries thanks thank you. Bye, sydney. thank you goodbye now bye um right Quickly, John Walker. What do you think of George Galloway, John? Right, quickly, quickly. I'll go. I'll go. I'll go for it. Um, so, um, George Galloway is breaking apart the Labour Party in 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 Oldham and Rochdale. He's already threatened that he's going after Angela Rayner's MP position. He wants to run in the Mayor of Manchester um, um, election, and he's going to be targeting Oldham. And all that means is it's good for me 
and other small parties and independents because we'll need less votes to get Labour out the Labour have got 31 or 32 seats in Oldham Council. If George Galloway comes in, I can see them losing five or more seats in, in the locals, which will be fantastic for our town. Um, I can't stand his politics, but the way he's come in and the current climate and this war and everything is the advantage of independents and small parties like the National Housing Party. So, you know, I'm 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 glad and I'm sure I'll be meeting up with him as well. Um he's had a meeting with Pag UK Billy about holding Rochdale Council to account. And um Billy's got evidence on councillors past and present, serving councillors, organizations, chief executives. He's got all this. And uh, George Galloway has done a video saying he's and, and he did it in the hustings, he said to me. He's going to go after people at, at the top. And um, that was, remember, guys, it's not, even though obviously we don't have a problem with Islamic rape gangs, it's the council's inability to deal with these issues, as pointed out in Oldham, which has led to a lot of the troubles we've had between different races, especially in Oldham and Rochdale. And um, I've got to say, yeah, uh, John, although he's old school. He's come across like a breath of fresh air, George Galloway. <laughs> and he hasn't been sectarian. He's reached out to other people. And um, the Labour Party have got to be held to account. They're just taking their constituency for granted. And uh, they're, they're just not interested in the people. They're not listening to anybody. I always say with Keir Starmer, it's way for thin, his popularity. Nobody really likes that guy. Nobody. And uh, it's, it's George Galloway doing a great job of exposing him. Any other questions, John? Let me have a look. Uh, Nick Wilson was in the chat. So, Nick Wilson, um, Rochdale lad, he's standing up to run in local elections uh, soon. Uh, but Nick's got a story, and it's not a nice story, but we'll, we'll, I will tell you about his story. Uh, no, um, I, I, I could say that um, Finger came on, James Harvey came on earlier and, and liked your acute analysis on that Marxist, um, what what did you say? In, in, sir, uh, when was that, John? It was earlier on uh, in, in the thing you were talking about. Um, wait, wait, I'll, I'll, I'll try and find it. I know it would. Uh, yeah. Are we still live or are we finished now? We're still live. We're still live. You can go if you want, Paul. Just thought I'd, I'd get in a little bit. Yeah, okay. I'll leave you to it, John. All right. All right. I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Man. Bye now. Bye. See you tomorrow. Bye. Bye. So, yeah, uh, interesting stuff going on in Rochdale at the moment. The, 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 they've set up a new group, Rochdale Independence. And if you, you didn't already know... Um, an independent comes second if the mem he got six thousand votes or whatever he did really well and i think uh, he's a potential member of parliament independent member of parliament it doesn't look like he's any kind of labor or conservative or mainstream puppet either um so yeah um good stuff going on in rochdale um i'm, I'm looking forward to stuff going on in oldham Ashton, like I said, um, Angela Rayner's seat's going to get targeted. Um, so he's not holding any punches back. And he will get votes. He will get votes because there is a big Islamic um, presence in them three areas. Whether it's enough to get Member of Parliament, I don't know. I don't know. But it's going to give him a run for the money. And this is what we'll need to shake up our politics. If the Labour Party now lose a majority in Oldham Council... Um, they'll have to come to some kind of there'll, there'll be a coalition and things are that things can only get better and further from that kind of position rather than dominating it and dominating everything within the council so good stuff but anyway thank you very much thank you to sydney lovely girl i met her the other month in manchester didn't speak but we'll get sydney on again and um uh, we'll, we'll tell you more. I mean, up and coming, we, I also met um, the Greta Thunberg of the freedom movement, they call her. She's called Jasmine. And I met her at the camp. 
and she talks about the WEF. Um, and stuff to do with COVID. I think she's only 12, 12, 12 year old climate change and all that. So I met her at the camp and I did, I did mention to her dad, would she, she would she be coming uh, up for an interview? And he did say, yeah. So um, that's up and coming, another youngster there. Um, so I met, um, I met Jasmine and her mum and dad uh, at the camp the other week, but yeah. Thank you very much. It's Late Night Veterans Show, Friday, 9 p.m. I'll see you all then. Good night.